Good morning everyone and welcome to my SharePoint 2016 search. My name is Mike Madarani and we will be having a little bit of fun for the next 30 minutes configuring and talking about hybrid search between Office 365 and on-premise SharePoint 2016. A lot of things to talk about, so let's get started. A quick intro about myself. My name is Mike Madarani. I am based in Ottawa. I've been doing SharePoint for the past 16 years right now. I focus on enterprise content management search and publishing sites. I am an Office 365 MVP, an architect, trainer, and a presenter. My contact info is on the screen if you'd like to email me or send me a tweet and I'll be glad and happy to answer your questions. Before we proceed, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the MVP Days committee and organizers for putting such a great event. I've been part of this show for the past two or three years. It's always been an honor to be part of it. And thank you again for making me part of this event. So let's get started. Quick thing before we go on, I am part of this Microsoft uh, OneDrive expert. And uh, we always, from a Microsoft perspective and from personally, looking from, uh, for some feedback from, from you about how I have performed and how the session went. So if you don't mind, there is a URL on the screen. If you'd like to go and complete a survey, it will take only a couple of minutes of your time after the session to complete the survey. The URL is there. If you would like to take a screenshot of it, it will be great. And uh, I thank you in advance for doing it. Our agenda for today is talking about SharePoint 2016 overview. Uh, what has changed uh, since uh, since the past, since the last couple of versions. We're going to go into deep into the cloud search service application. We're going to do a couple of demos, take some questions, and move on. Let's go back in history and look what we've had before SharePoint 2016. Back in the days with SharePoint 2010, SharePoint 2010 had its enterprise search capabilities, and on top of that, Microsoft acquired, just before the release of SharePoint 2010, a company called Fast Search. So uh, they quickly integrated Fast uh, as, as an add-on or, or a separate product called Fast Search for SharePoint 2010, where it has great capabilities from, from crawling and, and querying perspective and a lot of analytics in the back end. So if you look at the picture from one end, we have on the left hand side, we have all the content where the fast uh, content search service application will be crawling it. On the other end, from the user's perspective, the user is sending the queries through the web front end server, through the fast query search service application, and in the middle is the, where the magic happened. This was the fast search for SharePoint 2010 architecture back in the days it was a little bit complicated to actually implement it. All the implementation and configuration was through PowerShell code, about two or three pages of PowerShell commandlets that you have to go through one by one. And if you've missed any commandlets at some point, sometimes you don't get a warning or an error. And then, then you find that out that at the end of the configurations that something has gone wrong, you don't know where, and you have to start over again. So it was a pretty complex to actually set up fast search for SharePoint 2010. And also what it made it a little bit more confusing for administrators that they had to set up two search service applications. As you can notice on the left hand side, there is a fast content search service application which main mandate is to do the crawl of the content. On the other hand, where, uh, where the user is sending the queries on the right hand side, we had the fast query search service application. Its only job is to communicate the user to the actual index of the crawl of the crawl content to be able to retrieve some of the information. In the middle, where well, we have uh, we have the the red uh, the red outlines, we had the query pipeline and the content pipeline. But its main main mandate is to put all the actual requests, either from the query perspective or the crawl perspective, in a queue. To be able to be served. So that was SharePoint 2010 or fast search for SharePoint 2010. Then in SharePoint 2013, things changed quite a bit. What Microsoft has done, it has taken the actual fast search, uh, fast search for SharePoint 2010 and integrated it with SharePoint 2013. So we have this great uh, uh, SharePoint engine uh, that can serve a lot of content to the end user and we can build some 
uh, we can do build a lot of search APIs. So if you look at what's going on in the <clears throat> SharePoint 2013 search architecture, very similar to the previous one from a fast perspective, where the actual crawler, let's start from the left and work our way to the right hand side. From the left hand side, we have all the content and the content can be anything, can be SharePoint, can be FileShare, can be Exchange, can be Lotus Notes, uh, HTTP, uh, regular HTTP websites, whatever it is. So we are, we have a crawl components. We have about six components in SharePoint 2013 search architecture. The first one is the crawl component with its only job is to go and get the actual content from its source, crawl it, and pass it to the content processing component. So the crawler's job is to get the content and pass it to the content processing. It stores some of the information in a crawl database. The crawl database does not contain the actual crawl. The crawl database contains information about the crawl. For example, where the source location is, if you want to include or exclude some specific uh, URLs, if you want to include or exclude some specific file types, uh, if we have to authenticate against the source, whatever, it's just information about the crawl. It passes the, info, it passes the actual crawl content to the content processing, where that content processing component, all it does is analyze the content. For example, if there is any security trimming about the file that it has to take care of, if there is any linkages between this file and the next file, and it stores all this information in a linked database. Next, what happens is the index, which is still a fast search index in the middle, it's receiving the actual content, the actual crawl content from the content processing, and it stores it in an actual files on the file system. Below the index, we have the analytics processing. Its job is to talk to the actual index, to talk to the linked database where there's all this information and the relationship between, between the content, the content and security, the content and the user, the content and the content. Uh, and its job is to do the, all the analysis to start surfacing um, queries for us, or search, surfacing some content to the end user based on some specific behavior. Then if we jump all the way to the right from the end user perspective, the end user will communicate with, with search through two ways. Both, both of them will go through the web front end, but basically I can either do a specific uh, query or I can enter a keyword in a search box and it will go through the query processing to actually analyze the actual keyword and will pass it to the index, it receives the information from the index and pass it back to the actual user, or I can build a search API, search applications, where it's job to go and interact with the query processing, retrieve the information from the index, and pass it back to the end user. The, uh, the web front end also communicate with the analytics. So basically, it's gonna go and grab, uh, or it's gonna go and talk to the analytics processing. So for example, if I'm searching for a specific item, like uh, let's say laptop, uh, and I'm going to get some results, the analytics processing will start suggesting some related item to the laptop, such as mouse, keyboard, laptop bags, and so on. And the last one is the search admin that stores information about the administration of search in a database. Uh, so something like, for example, where the content sources are, uh, what kind of configuration from a search schema's perspective, if I want to do some optimization against the search service application, this is all stored in the search admin database. In SharePoint 2016 right now, so now back to back to the future, the architecture actually did not change much. We still have the same um, the same components that we have in 2013, the same steps. Nothing changed from that perspective, but it has been increased or enhanced quite a bit. For example, a hybrid search is here, and it is much easier to implement, and we'll talk about it in a couple of slides. So hold on to that to that thought. The scalability is doubled right now. In SharePoint 2013 search, we can only crawl up to 250 million items. In SharePoint 2016, we can actually crawl up to 500 million items. That means we have we can have up to 25 index partitions, and each index partition can hold 20 million items. So that's a lot of items to crawl. So as you can see, the scalability is huge right now compared to what it was before. It was quite big before, 250 million items crawled. 
that's a lot of a lot of items to be crawled. Now we are 500 million items. There is an increased performance optimization on the query processing. What does that mean? That the query processing has been a little bit tweaked and optimized to be able to actually um, respond to the user's request from a from a manual keyword search perspective or search application perspective and will be able to actually analyze all those queries and go and grab the information from the indexer. So let's talk about hybrid search and most of the actual session will be talking about hybrid search and what to, how to set it up. Basically, as it says, we've always, we've probably all of us have, have heard about hybrid and what it means. It's a combination of cloud and on-premise. From a, from a search perspective, it's pretty much the same where we have a unified search result coming from both on-premise and online. We have a Delve integration. We can have, have content source from different places. We can have it from shared drive. We can have it from on-prem. We can have it from SharePoint online, from OneDrive. Whatever that source is, it, all, it can be from the, the cloud, from on-premise, but the actual results is uh, displayed uh, in one place. So if you look at the actual SharePoint hybrid search in 2016, there is a quick picture that explains a little bit of the flow between the cloud and on-premise. Anything in the blue box will represent the crawl flow and anything in the orange uh, red box represent the query flow. So the actual um, crawling is happening from, for example, from a hybrid perspective, you are on premise, is happening on, uh, in SharePoint 2016, but all the queries is happening from Office 365. So let's take a look at the different uh, scenarios here. From a, from a hybrid search 2016, this is what we're looking at. On one side, we have SharePoint server that has all the content and you have search enabled there. In the other box where Office 365 is, we have content and we have search as well. However, both content will be using one index. The index in, in a hybrid search in 2016 does not live on, in, in an on-prem uh, farm anymore. The index is in the Office 365. So when you go and search for any content, either from online or on-premise, you're actually searching or retrieving the, account, the content from the index that is stored in Office 365. And the end result is one unified experience for the end user, one search center, content is coming from online or on-premise. People don't, don't have to go to multiple URLs to use the search to be able to retrieve the content. So if you want to set up some uh, hybrid search in 2016, there are some mandatory requirements. Even though we're talking about 2016, that scenario is also applicable from a SharePoint 2013 perspective only if you apply August 2015 to you. So you need that or SharePoint 2016. You need to have, obviously, if you're setting up a hybrid search, you need an Office 365 subscription and an Azure subscription. You must have, and we go through those, those requirements in details, you must synchronize your users and groups from your on-prem AD to your Office 365 Azure Active Directory. You have to create, a, what is it called now, a cloud search service application. You, wanna run, you have to run some scripts called onboarding prerequisites, and you have to execute those onboarding scripts. So from a logical perspective, uh, the first step is to actually, uh, from the bottom left, is to synchronize your local AD with Azure AD. Then the first step and the second step from the cloud search service application in the um, bottom middle is to create your search service application, do the crawling, pass it to the cloud where the actual Office 365 is, is doing all the content processing all the ACL mapping and the queuing and passing it to the SharePoint index in the top right. So all the work from a processing perspective is happening on Office 365. The only thing is, is, is what we're doing in on-premise is crawling and parsing. From an Azure AD Connect perspective, the picture explains it all. I have on once on the left-hand side my um, local AD. On the right-hand side, I have my Azure AD and it goes and synchronizes your SID between on-prem and Azure. 
from a requirements perspective, you must have a subscription from Azure or a trial subscription or an Office 365 paid license. You must have a verified domain. For example, Contoso, the on Microsoft.com is not enough. You have to have a verified domain of Contoso.com configured in your Office 365. And the actual information on the screen will explain what are the requirements from a service perspective. I'm not going to go through them, but one thing I can tell you that from an Azure AD uh, DeerSync perspective, you don't have to install it on the on your local AD. It can be installed on any server connected to your domain. The Azure AD uh, DeerSync uh, installation perspective is pretty simple. You go through the express settings. It's a wizard. You go next, next, next. You enter your Azure AD credentials. You must be an Azure tenant. Um, then you can have to connect to your local ADDS. You must be an administrator. And then one thing I would recommend you not to click on the start the synchronization process after the configuration is complete, just because you want to go and, and configure uh, which OUs you want to synchronize with Office 365. You probably don't want to synchronize everything with Azure AD. Just don't select it, do the installation, come back to it, uh, to the configuration and select which OU you want to sync. Um, then we're going to have to go and create the search service application. We have two options. PowerShell or Central Admin. If you've done PowerShell, basically all you have to do is add this cloud index is true and say is hybrid equal one. For example, if you look at this PowerShell command, nothing changed from creating a new SP Enterprise Search Service application. The only thing we've added is a parameter at the end. It's uh, saying that dash cloud index is true and that it will create your search service application as a cloud search service application. Um, this is a snippet of the PowerShell. Uh, you don't have to take a snapshot of this. Uh, you can go into my blog and I'll have the blog URL at the end and you will be able to grab all the script. So let's get in and show you what the cloud search service application is all about. I'm not gonna go through the process of creating a, on the, uh, in, the, in, in my session uh, a cloud search service application because it takes time to do it. So I've done here, I've got all gone ahead and created one. So I'm going to show you quickly what it, how you create it. Either you go through the PowerShell, you can download it from the blog, or if you go through Central Admin, I definitely recommend PowerShell because I have full control of naming how the database uh, naming convention is for search instead of uh, ending up with good base names. If I click from Central Admin, this is a SharePoint 2016 uh, farm I have on premise here. So if I click, if I go into the application services, click on you and go all the way down to search service application, nothing changed from a configuration perspective except this part here where it says cloud search service application. If I click it, it will create one for me. I'm not going to do that right now because I've already created one. So this is my uh, search service application. It looks pretty much exactly the same as, as what we've done before. Uh, we have a content source where my content source in, in this instance is pointing to a local uh, SP2016 farm. So we have that already set up. Uh, so what I did is I created it ahead of time. I set up the crawls. I have everything configured from a crawl perspective. So again, you just go to new and search service application and you will be able to create your cloud search service application. Let's come back here and show you some um, quick examples of what it needs or the steps that is needed to create the cloud search service application. It's not only creating that, you have to do a little bit more steps to be able to enable that hybrid search between Office 365 and on-premise. So this is my PowerShell script. It just created it. It will have this. This is a screenshot of the output. I have always liked to validate if my search service application has been created and running properly. So this is another set of PowerShell command that I'd like to verify post uh, installation or configuration of SSA. And basically when I run this, if you look at the screen, it's a screenshot. It tells me exactly um, what components have been configured, where they are. And at the bottom of the screenshot, if you can notice here, uh, basically it's highlighted. It's true here, 
it means that this is an actual cloud search service application. Plug outages that you have to look at, uh, you can only have one cloud search service application per farm, but you can have multiple classic search service application. Uh, that's because you, you have to have a trust. You have to set up a trust between your, between your Azure AD, your Office 365 tenant, and your on-prem tenant. You have to have that one-to-one -one mapping only. You cannot have multiple-to-multiple -multiple or one-to-many, many-to-one, because it needs to know where it has to go and get the content from. The on the on-prem needs to know where to send the actual content to which index. So only today, only one cloud SSA per farm. However, topology scaling is still the same. If you scale your topology, your search topology in the past with SharePoint 2013, where you've gone from one search service application into multiple search service application, multiple query servers, multiple uh, uh, crawling servers or indexers, it's the exact same scenario if you scale uh, now as the same way that you scale before. So once we figured uh, we're cloud search service applications, we have to do a few things. We have to install a Microsoft Online Services sign-in assistance that will allow us or that will allow your search service accounts to automatically sign in into your Azure tenant to be able to authenticate and send the information to the Office 365 index. And once you install that, you must reboot before you proceed to the next installation, which is your Microsoft Azure AD PowerShell. This is really required for the next step for the next set of scripts because we have to run some PowerShell scripts to be able to configure this trust between our Azure AD, our Office 365, and the SharePoint on-prem. Again, after each installation, I want to do a couple of validations. One is I want to make sure that the Microsoft Online Services sign-in assistant is online. So with this get services, MSOID service status will give me that the service is running and I will do some import of the uh, MS Online uh, on the Azure AD PowerShell and we'll get some uh, commandless back. The very last step that we have to do is called an onboarding process. And this onboarding process has few steps. It's a set of PowerShell scripts available on Microsoft website. It's been designed, developed uh, by um, the product group that will allow you to establish that trust between your on-premise and Office 365. Remember that we've created the cloud search service application only, and we have not set up that trust. We have to have that handshake between the two tenants to be able for those two tenants to talk to each other. So there are four steps in the onboarding process. The first one is get hybrid SSA. The first set of PowerShell uh, commands job is to make sure that there is a cloud or a hybrid search service application. It has to check if the current farm, on-prem current farm, has a hybrid search service application. If it doesn't have a hybrid search service application, if that checkbox was not checked and it's not created as a cloud search service application, it will not proceed at all. The second step is to prepare the environment. This one will check if the Microsoft Online Single Sign-On is installed and Windows Azure PowerShell commanders are available. That's because the next set of scripts will have to use those two tools to be able to proceed. One is automatic sign on authentication with Office 365, and the second one to make sure that it can properly run all the Azure uh, PowerShell commandlets. The third step is we have to connect the SharePoint farm to the Azure AD. And what it does, it deploys an ACS proxy, which its own purpose is to go and communicate or authenticate to Azure AD. And the last step is it will add a service principle. It goes, so what we did is the previous step, all it does is it goes and establish a trust from on-prem to Azure AD. It creates that connection to go and communicate to Azure AD. And the last step, it will add a service principle. What it means that it will add the farm ID for Office 365. So Office 365, when you go and search on Office 365, it will return results from your on-premise to that second or the second way trust. So we have done a trust from on-premise to Office 365. Now we're going to have a trust from Office 365 to on-premise to 
to be able for both to talk to each other. This is definitely required. Let's go back to our demo. So we've created, I've showed you that I have created a, a search service application. I have an on-premise uh, information here, on-premise portal that has some documents, blah, 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 some pictures on the right-hand side. And I have my, if I look, you look at the actual URL, it's an Office 365 uh, tenant with search uh, center installed on it. So this is my personal uh, sharepoint.com slash search uh, tenant. So if you go and search for docx, for example, we should get back information from on-premise and from online. If you look at the first set of documents, it's all coming from SP2016 slash search documents, SP DC demo, which some of them are here. This is the local one. And if I go into, for example, this one, you have to pull up an index course. It has some of the actual information. This is coming from my, uh, my OneDrive for business and so on. So um, as you can see, um, I have mixed results. This is my hybrid search. This is great. I'm getting results from two different tenants. My my online uh, tenant is getting me results from the uh, from the local from the local tenant. I have done some filtering as well. For example, I can add um, a query rule where I can say I want you to show. Me. I don't want to research uh, enter my keyword again. I want to go and get some results from Office 365 only. I can click on this tab, and all you can see here, everything is coming from Office 365. I got no on-prem coming. Everything is Office 365, nothing from SP 2016. So this is a quick demo that we can show you where you can do and how you can do your Office 365 search, hybrid search. Come back and close out. We've talked about basically doing a, a query uh, query rule where you want to have uh, only uh, show display information because now when 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 you do a hybrid search, you're gonna get a mixed result between online and 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 on premise. You can put some query rules where you can say I want you only to display uh, content from online only or on premise only. Just give uh, the users the end user a little bit better experience. From one search place, they can put the results from on-premise or Office 365. One thing we want to tell, I want, I want to mention before we wrap it up, that if you upload some content and you don't see it uh, right away, that's because you have to, you have to let it crawl. Uh, sometimes it depends on your bandwidth, your internet connection. If you upload large content to on-premise, it will take some time for it to go and upload it into the your indexer. So don't expect the actual results to show up in seconds. Um, so be patient from that perspective. But I haven't seen a huge delay, so the performance is great, the way the, way the actual data is packed and, and sent to Office 365. So as a takeaway from our session, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, we've created a cloud search service application. One thing you want to remember is only, again, one index. In the, it's the one index in the cloud. You can have multiple on-premise data uh, you can have SharePoint online data. The advantage of it, we have one search center, one user experience. Uh, one gotcha is you can only have one cloud search service application per tenant. You cannot have multiple one. There are some configurations needed, and the configurations needed are in. You have to configure them in sequence. You have to go into, you have to connect. Of course, first of all, you have to do you have to connect uh, your uh, on-premise AD to Azure AD. You have to do your synchronization. You have to create. So this is one. This is two. You have to create your cloud search service application. Third one is you have to install your online single sign-in. The fourth step, you have to install the Azure PowerShell. And the last step here, this is the magic. Number five, this is where you actually run the onboarding script and will allow you to do that handshake and the trust between both. Again, this is the survey. I uh, will be, uh, I'll be greatly appreciated if you can complete it and give me your feedback. And thank you again for joining me. My contact info is on the screen. If you'd like to shoot me an email or tweet me, I'll be again happy to answer your questions. Thanks again.